One of the hidden secrets of the Hopi prophecy, and I violate no tradition in revealing this, is that the return of Bahana will, excuse me, the return of the Blue Star Kachina Nangasohu is always a double appearance. Every event that takes place in prophecy is uh, always brought out in pairs. One of the secrets of Nangasuhu is that he always appears as doubles. He never appears alone. The Hopi prophecy, the hidden Hopi prophecy, suggests that his brother will appear seven years later. The second prophecy about Bahana, the great white companion, I suggest, tells us that seven years after the arrival of Hale Bop, a second larger white, in quotation marks, comet will appear. If we take the, the arrival of Hale Bop as 1997, then according to the existing calendar, I suggest that in uh, uh, the year 2004, we will find the second great white comet appearing in the skies. And I am going to suggest that that is the signal, the arrival of the divinity, of the gods that be, of the powers, of the extraterrestrials, the aliens, whatever one wishes to call them. I suggest that in the year 2004, per our current calendar, that that is the time we can look for their arrival. If we correct the calendar to allow for the actual birth date of Jesus. Scholars, um, astro-computer experts, people who have uh, recreated the heavens, who have taken evidence from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the writings of the time, have all come to a consensus. They agree that Jesus was very likely born in 7 B.C., not in the year zero, but in 7 B.C. If then we correct the calendar by seven years. We need to add seven more years to our calendar in order to properly adjust for the birth of Jesus. Thus, the return of the comet in the year 2004, corrected by seven years, puts it at the year 2011. I suggest that that is too coincidentally close to the year 2012, 2012, which is the end of the Mayan calendar and which ties in quite clearly with the Oriental calendar and their time frame as to when the world comes to an end. It is too coincidental. I suggest that the Blue Star Kachina, Comet Hyakutake, and the crop circles are all leading us to the same conclusion. The powers that be are about to return. Now, I want to take a moment here to explain to you, the public, for the first time, a secret that we have carried with us for some time, which will show you the deviousness, the fraudulent behavior, the self-aggrandizement of some of the speakers who are on the so-called UFO circuit. Years ago... I was giving a lecture in one of the universities to some professors and their wives about the Kachinas of the Hopi. I, at that time, was talking about star Kachinas. There was Nangasoho, Sohu, Hilili, there were numerous. Each one of them bore stars very prominently on the chest, in their hair, on their feathers, or, and even on their face. I had produced several carvings and was trying to talk about each one of them and their meaning. There was one Kachina who was bright yellow, another one that was blue, one that was red, one that was multicolored. In response to one of the questions of the professors, I described Nangasuhu, the chasing star, the fulfillment of prophecy, the harbinger. I referred to this star Kachina with the blue face as the blue star Kachina. In this fashion, in this very simple way, I could convey to the professors and their wives who and which Kachina I was talking about. I wish to advise you now that in the Hopi mythology, in the cosmology and description of Kachinas, there is no such thing as a blue star Kachina. 
this was an effort on my part years ago to describe a particular carving. What I am suggesting is that, in essence, I made an error nearly 30 years ago to some college professors. The Hopi cosmology has no blue star kachina. This is a term that I invented, that I have used. It is actually an error. I marvel at the speakers, at the so-called researchers who have been putting out in their magazines and in their newspapers and their newsletters that they have worked closely with the Hopi, that they have received the prophecies of the Blue Star Kachina, that they have in fact learned from the elders the secrets of the Blue Star Kachina. Ladies and gentlemen, I made a mistake 30 years ago. I oversimplified. And the researchers today who proclaim themselves the holders and interpreters of the Blue Star Kachina, who have worked with the elders of the Blue Star Kachina, are 100% wrong. It is a deliberate deceit. There is no such thing as a Blue Star Kachina. The crop circles that are appearing today have been attributed to, <laughs> to two individuals named Doug and Dave. I had the horrible experience a couple of nights ago of watching one of the uh, programs, which I, I, I have a great deal of regard for on cable TV, and they took uh, a good friend, Colin Andrews, to task. They attempted to debunk the crop circles. They attempted to show that all of the crop circles were hoaxes. I am extremely dismayed that... Uh, programs that uh, organizations which purport to tell the truth have an incredible slant. I have seen other researchers taken apart on national TV. Things like abductions and crop circles and UFO experiences are being denied in the media. We are being told that these are all fantasies, illusions, they're mind games, the manipulations of psychologists, the twisted work of individuals who are trying to gain fame and make a fortune. I guarantee you that individuals like Graham, uh, Graham Hancock and uh, Colin Andrews, myself and others, who are truly trying to bring out the truth, are not making a great deal of money out of this. We are simply getting from day to day trying to produce the truth. Why is the government so bent on denying the existence of UFOs? Why is the government denying the existence of crop circles? Why do they struggle so hard to deny the existence of extraterrestrials? As I have suggested earlier, it isn't because they're trying to preserve their positions and, and their institutions. It's because of the fear that they have that when the truth comes out, we will find that they really don't have control of this planet, that they really are beholden to other powers, and that we are being deceived. Recently, a lot of attention has been uh, drawn towards an, um, a being in uh, Puerto Rico. It is known as the Chupacabra, the goat sucker. The Chupacabras has been uh, portrayed on television. We've seen it in the magazines and in the newspapers. There is a tremendous furor over this Chupacabras and how it attacks the goats and the rabbits and, and now has begun to attack human beings. The fever has gripped the United States, and now there are sightings of chupacabras in Florida, New Mexico, Arizona, and my understanding is that the chupacabras was sighted in southern Los Angeles. Who and what is the chupacabras? From the minimal material that we have received from other researchers, what we have seen, the documentation, the videos, it appears that the chupacabras, no pun intended, is a scapegoat. It appears that the chupacabras is capable of attacking eight goats simultaneously. He does not claw them or bite them in the neck to kill them. In fact, it appears that there are puncture wounds at the base of the neck. A needle-like snout is inserted into the brain. The creature is stunned and dies from brain damage. And this can be done to eight goats, eight rabbits, simultaneously. 
I suggest that there is no creature on this planet that could possibly do that. I suggest there is no creature on another planet that could do this. The clincher for me was a video which purported to show approximately two dozen birds who had been attacked either in flight or on the ground simultaneously by this one creature. I am suggesting to you that this is not a wild beast. If this creature is responsible for all of these attacks, then the creature has to have some sort of technology that accompanies it. It has to have some sort of an instrument or weapon that stuns the creatures and leaves no sign. It has to have an intelligence in order to carry and use this kind of weapon. It may very well be an extraterrestrial presence if, in fact, it does what is attributed to it. I honestly believe that those researchers, some of whom I have respect for, are being misled. I believe that the Chupacabras is being accused of all of these attacks and will ultimately be blamed for cattle mutilations. I believe they are looking for a scapegoat so that we will look elsewhere. I believe the cattle mutilations. I believe the attacks in Puerto Rico and attacks all over the world are not done by chupacabras. They're done by extraterrestrial presences and or military participants. I suggest that there is a secret military working hand-in-hand with a chupacabra, with extraterrestrials, and with the powers that be. If this is not the most outrageous conspiracy theory you have heard, my apologies. But it gets even better. Last year, a video surfaced, a film purporting to be the autopsy of an extraterrestrial. It was known 